the event, I think maybe they're actually going to be an extraterrestrial intervention into our civilization. And we might be seeing things from another world that are legitimately real. And these are all the things which were prophesied in the Bible. They're prophesied in the ancient Hopi prophecies, in the Mayans, the Incas, all of the ancient peoples have prophesied that the gods would come back. They're coming back. Well, what are you talking about coming back? Every 3,600 years, Nibiru comes through, a planet comes through, in which we are told by the Sumerians, those people from Nibiru uh, who have come from another planet and another world look like us. And they created or recreated us, and they're coming back, and they're not very happy with us. And they're not very happy with the alien life forms who are here who have been manipulating us and using us. It's like one gang coming in and finding out another gang has set up shop here. And they say, hey, wait a minute. You know, just because we went down to the store, that don't mean you come in here and take over. Well, we're already here. What are you going to do about it? Well, we'll show you what we're going to do about it. And now all of a sudden the people in the neighborhood, they better get out of here because there's going to be a war. And it's not because they're trying to protect you. It's ownership. Somebody came here and created us. And they're coming back and they're going to find out others are here. And they're taking over our planet. So I'm saying that there's a very good chance that there is a whole nother story in the Bible encoded. And from my talking with rabbis and, and looking at the subject, I think there is something legitimate about all of this. I do not discard the Bible, both Old and New Testament. I think there's some very interesting and important material in there. I just don't think we fully understood it yet. It's a lot of encoded stuff. Again, tohu, vohu means cosmic destruction on a cosmic level. And if we, in fact, begin to see two opposing forces of gods, alien life forms from other world that have, we all know, technology we don't even understand. And if they begin an all-out war between themselves on this earth, we are going to see some extraordinary destruction, some very, very powerful and fearful things. And this is what the scripture says. It says in Isaiah that men are going to beg God to die and for the mountains to crawl in over them. They're going to wish that they were dead. And Jeremiah says men will be having heart attacks thinking about what's coming. They can already see it coming, the implications. I think tohu and vohu, cosmic destruction on a cosmic level is about to begin. I think that's exactly what's now on the way. This is why the powers that be in America are so dead strong and so locked in on what they're going to do is because they have no alternative. The people who are actually running this government from behind the scenes, we call it the world government or the Illuminati or the secret societies. No, I think the people who are running this thing from behind the scenes are not even human. And what they got planned according to their own agenda for ownership of us is going to be one hell of a war and at this point, I would conclude by saying, I believe the only hope that we have as individual humans, I am totally convinced because too much has proven this to me, that over and above this scenario, if it has any validity at all, over and above this scenario, bad as it is, there is above the scenario a higher power in the universe that men have called, for a lack of a better term, God. There are many terms that can be used for God. The divine presence in the universe, the Holy Spirit, I don't care what you call it because all nations, races and peoples on the earth have acknowledged the presence of, quote, it, whatever it is, but it's there. If you choose to call it God or the divine, incidentally the word divine comes from the idea that the red wine represents the blood and the blood represents life and it came from the vine. The blood comes from the vine. But I don't care if you call God the divine one, the Holy Spirit, the great father, it doesn't matter what you call that presence in the universe. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there is a higher power 
in the universe that watches these skirmishes between races in its great creation. And I would suggest that the way to protect yourself is the way the scripture said to do it, and the way that the New Testament admonishes to do it, and that is to verbally, by yourself, when no one is around, talk to the Spirit as if the Spirit were a very highly intelligent, powerful man or woman that you were talking to. If you were talking to a very powerful dignitary, you would not jumble your words. You were very specific in what you want to say. Have the highest of respect for that one that you're speaking before. And once you have said your piece before the king and before that high official, then drop it. That's it. You've said your piece. He has heard it. It's over. Now, he will do whatever he decides to do in your behalf, but it's over. You don't need to explain anything more or whine about it. And so I think that this is the most powerful thing that an individual can do, is talk to the creator, the divine spirit in the universe, ask for direction, ask, what am I supposed to do? How can I protect myself and my loved ones? Show me what I am to know. Show me what I am to do. And I will listen. I will do whatever it is. No matter how wrong I am, I will listen. You show me. What you need to understand that once you do that, Jesus, the scripture has Jesus saying, you have not because you ask not. It is a normal thing in human communications. If you ask someone for something, they now have the option to grant the wish or not grant the wish. Well, if you go before a very powerful king or a very powerful man and ask him for something, don't make a nuisance out of yourself. You've asked, you've asked, and, and he has heard, and he'll decide. Maybe he decides no. Well, whatever the decision is, that's it anyway. So consequently, I believe that if you're concerned about your spirituality and your life, is to quietly talk to God or talk to the universe of God for us, because believe me, it's there and it hears you, and ask, what am I to do? What am I to know? Show me where I'm wrong. Tell me what I have to do, and I'm going to do it. Then leave it alone and watch the way the Spirit works. Things will begin to happen around you. And all of a sudden, you know, things will begin to pop up in front of you. You'll be asking a question and it will come on television. You'll open up a magazine and there it is, the answer, right in front of you. And you think that's by chance? No, you asked God for direction, didn't you? So the scripture says God works in strange ways. So... I'm saying that we are in a very perilous time 